This is lithium. Some call it white gold. It's the lifeblood of our green energy future, the element we can't live without as we move away from fossil fuels. Every electric car, every smartphone, every power grid, storing wind and solar energy, they all depend on this one mineral. And a massive, game-changing deposit has just been found in a place you might not expect, Liberia, a country scarred by decades of civil war, a nation whose name is tied to a painful history of its resources being stripped away. Suddenly, this small West African nation is sitting on a treasure that could completely rewrite its future. The discovery promises a staggering $3 billion in new investments, a lifeline that could pull millions out of poverty and finally build a modern economy. But this isn't a simple story of buried treasure. For Liberia, this feels like a terrifying echo of the past. A past where foreign powers got rich from its rubber, its iron ore, and its diamonds, leaving behind scarred landscapes and broken promises. So the question isn't just about the wealth under the ground. It's about whether this time, just this one time, can be different. Will this be Liberia's salvation? Or will the resource curse strike again? For more than 50 years, nobody really knew the full extent of Liberia's mineral wealth. The last major survey was way back in the 1970s, but in early 2025, that all changed. A new, comprehensive national survey, this time funded by China and conducted over several years, revealed a treasure trove of resources that went far beyond what anyone imagined. The findings were revolutionary. It confirmed not just huge deposits of lithium, the star of the green energy show, but also a whole list of other critical minerals, uranium, cobalt, manganese, and neodymium. All at once, Liberia wasn't just a nation of iron ore and rubber anymore. It was a potential powerhouse for the very minerals the rest of the world is scrambling to get its hands on. President Joseph Bokai announced the country expects to attract a massive $3 billion in investments to get these resources out of the ground. And this isn't just about digging. The negotiations already happening involve multinational mining giants and local investors. With money aimed at building up energy, technology, and infrastructure, the projections are stunning. The government sees this new mining boom pushing economic growth from 5.1% in 2024 to 5.8% in 2025. For one of the world's poorest countries, that's a seismic shift. World Bank data suggests this could drop the poverty rate from 31% to 27.8% in the coming year alone. This is more than just money. It's a chance to finally diversify an economy that's always been at the mercy of a few commodities. For 5.5 million people who have been through so much, it felt like a new beginning, a golden opportunity. But in Liberia, history has a harsh lesson. What looks like a gift can often carry a very heavy price. So how do you get this white gold out of the ground? Liberia's lithium is found in hard rock formations called pegmatites. And the way you extract it is as brutal as it is effective. Open pit mining. Picture this, systematically blasting and carving away enormous chunks of the earth, creating massive, terraced craters that are visible from space. The process is environmentally devastating. It starts with clearing huge areas of forest, destroying entire ecosystems. That leads to severe soil erosion and the permanent loss of habitats for wildlife. The damage spreads from there. Water, the source of life, becomes another casualty. Lithium extraction is incredibly thirsty. While some methods, like those for South American brine deposits, can use up to 1.9 million liters of water for a single ton of lithium, Liberia's hard rock mining is less water intensive. Still, it puts an immense strain on local water supplies. And it's not just how much water is used, it's what's left behind. The process often uses a cocktail of toxic chemicals like sulfuric acid to separate the mineral from the rock. These chemicals can, and often do, leak into rivers, streams, and groundwater. This poisons aquatic life and directly threatens the health of communities who depend on that water to drink, cook, and farm. Liberia already has a shaky track record here. 
Just look at the 2024 shutdown of the Bong mines, which were operated by China Union. The government had to step in because of serious environmental problems, including pollution, and operating without the right permits. This wasn't a one-off thing. Across the country, illegal mines have been caught using mercury and cyanide, which flow right into the rivers. A UN report from years ago pointed to thousands of unlicensed mines carving up forests and riverbeds. What's left when the minerals are gone is often a poisoned, broken landscape. In the west of the country, what was once called the Bomi Hills is now known by locals as the Bomi Holes, a permanent scar from iron ore mining that stripped the resource bare in just 27 years. This new lithium rush threatens to do the same, but on an even bigger scale, turning Liberia's green promise into a brown, barren wasteland. The fear haunting Liberia isn't just about the environment. It's the deep, historical fear of being exploited all over again. This story of a foreign power arriving with big promises of investment is one Liberia knows by heart. For most of the 20th century, Liberia's economy was run by one American company, Firestone, in 1926. The government gave the tire giant a million-acre concession to create the world's largest rubber plantation. In return, Liberia got a loan it desperately needed, but it essentially became a corporate-run state. Then came the open-door policy, designed to bring in foreign money. American and European companies rushed in to mine iron ore. They built railroads not to connect Liberian towns, but to get raw materials out of the country and into the global market as fast as possible. Between the 1940s and 1960s, exports of iron ore, timber, and rubber skyrocketed. By the 1970s, Liberia had the biggest rubber industry in the world and was the third largest exporter of iron ore. But where did the money go? Overwhelmingly, the profits flowed overseas to foreign investors. A small, elite group of americo liberians in charge of the government got rich. But the vast majority of people stayed poor. The jods paid little, and the new infrastructure only served the companies, not the public. It was a classic enclave economy, where foreign operations existed in their own bubble, totally disconnected from the local people. This pattern of taking resources without developing the country created deep inequalities that helped fuel the brutal civil wars that tore Liberia apart from 1989 to 2003. Those wars were bankrolled by blood diamonds as different factions fought for control of the mines. So today, with this lithium discovery, Liberians are asking the big question, what's different this time? The players may have changed, with Chinese investment now in the lead, but the power dynamic feels disturbingly familiar. Will the benefits finally be shared, or will they be siphoned off once again, leaving Liberia with nothing but holes in the ground and a repeat of its tragic history? Despite the dark echoes of the past, it would be a mistake to ignore the massive opportunity here. This isn't the Liberia of the 1950s. After emerging from its civil wars, the country has been trying to build a more stable, democratic future. And this mineral boom, if it's managed right, could finally power that transformation. The economic projections aren't just numbers on a page, they represent real hope. That jump in GDP growth to 5.8% is a big deal. For a nation that has been one of the poorest on earth, this is a shot at real, sustainable development. And the government's plan is bigger than just shipping out raw lithium. The $3 billion in expected investment is meant not just for mines, but for building up the whole country. That means new energy grids, modern technology, and better roads and railways to connect everyone. These are the kinds of investments that can ripple out across the whole economy. Job creation is at the center of it all. With a young population and high unemployment, the promise of new jobs in mining, construction, and tech is a powerful reason for optimism. The government is trying to bring in not just huge multinational companies, but also local investors, hoping to keep more of the wealth inside Liberia. Companies like ArcelorMittal, which are already there, have shown that big investments can lead to infrastructure that helps local communities. 
Plus, there's growing interest from other global companies like Metalite Resources, which could give Liberia more power in negotiations. The government has also put laws in place that simply didn't exist during the free-for-all of the past. There are acts that offer protections and incentives for investors, and mining laws that require environmental and social impact studies. Special economic zones are being set up to encourage more industrial growth. There's a clear understanding that for this to work, the benefits have to be shared widely. The goal is to use this mineral wealth to build a stronger economy, one that can finally provide education, healthcare, and a better life for all Liberians. That's the dream. The question is whether the government has the strength and the political will to make it happen. This story is unfolding right now, and the stakes couldn't be higher. What do you think will happen? Will Liberia break the cycle, or is history doomed to repeat itself? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to follow stories like this one, exploring the complex lines between technology, resources, and global politics, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Your support helps us keep bringing these critical issues to light. There's a critical new piece to this story, one that makes it different from Liberia's past, the central role of China. While American and European companies ran the show during the first resource boom, the 21st century has seen China become the main economic partner for much of Africa. And Liberia is no exception. It was a Chinese-funded survey that revealed Liberia's mineral wealth. Chinese companies are already major players in the country's mines, and they are ready to be at the front of the line for these new lithium deposits. This relationship is a double-edged sword. On one hand, China offers something Western partners often didn't. Fast, large-scale infrastructure projects with fewer political strings attached. Beijing has paid for new roads, government buildings, and a new airport terminal in Liberia. This model, bundling resource deals with construction, can bring real benefits that past deals never did. Supporters say China is providing the exact capital and expertise that Liberia needs to kickstart its development. But this partnership also comes with serious red flags. China's approach in Africa has been slammed for its lack of transparency, a tendency to ignore environmental rules, and the risk of creating debt traps, where countries end up owing their lender everything. The shutdown of the China Union-operated bong mines over environmental issues is a huge warning sign. There are also worries about labor practices, with accusations that Chinese companies bring in their own workers for skilled jobs, limiting how many locals get hired. Let's be clear, China's goal is to secure a steady flow of raw materials for its own massive industries. That creates a huge power imbalance. Desperate for investment, Liberia could be pressured into signing away its resources in deals that aren't in its own long-term best interest. The Liberian people deserve to know every detail of these agreements to make sure they include strong environmental protections, guarantees for local jobs, and a fair share of the money. China's involvement could be a powerful engine for growth, but without strong leadership and a fierce defense of its national interests, Liberia risks simply trading one master for another. Liberia stands at a crossroads, facing a choice that will define its future for generations. Under its soil is a possible key to prosperity, a ticket to the green energy economy that could build schools, hospitals, and a better life for its people. The promise is enormous. Three billion dollars in investment, a booming economy, and a real path out of poverty. But history casts a long, dark shadow. The ghosts of Firestone and the Bomi Holes are a constant reminder of how easily a resource blessing can become a resource curse. The environmental damage from open pit mining is deep and permanent, threatening to swap short-term cash for long-term ruin. The real challenge isn't just getting the lithium out of the ground, it's doing it on Liberia's own terms. That will demand a level of governance, transparency, and political will that the country has often lacked. It means enforcing tough environmental laws to protect its forests and rivers.
It means making sure mining contracts create real jobs for Liberians, not just foreign workers. And it means fighting the corruption that has always funneled resource money into the pockets of a powerful few. Can they do it? Can a small, post-conflict nation stand up to global economic giants and demand a fair deal? The odds are long, but the stakes are everything. This discovery is Liberia's ultimate test. It is a chance to finally break the cycles of the past and build a future of its own making. The world is watching, not just for the flow of lithium, but to see if a nation so long defined by what was taken from it can finally define itself by what it builds.